And today's task is to understand objectivity. Journalists have long claimed to be objective. Their claim to be objective has, for some time, come under scrutiny. What we're going to try and do is understand both the, the meaning of that term and that scrutiny. So let's go to this concept of objectivity. As always, I'm going to step back and recognize that a word can be used in different ways in different contexts. So we're going to look at three ways that the term objectivity might be used. How it's used in everyday conversation, how it's used in a scientific laboratory, and how it's used specifically in journalism. Okay. That's our task for the beginning of this period. Let's go through this term, objectivity. We use the term objectivity in everyday language. Imagine you're talking to someone and you've got very heated opinions. Uh, let's say it's something of crucial importance, like the Texas versus Texas A&M football game, something that, um, you know, life and death matters. You know what I'm talking about? And let's say that you're becoming very passionate in your conversation about this matter, and perhaps even kind of <laughs> overheated borderline hysterical. You can imagine, yes? The reason Texas is going to win is the, okay, let's start with the offense. The offense is your, God, you can't believe it. Okay. <laughs> All right, and you're, and you're, you're going into this, and your friend says, cool down, try and be objective about this, okay? We use that term in that way all the time. People say, just be objective. What do, they, what do people mean in everyday conversation when they say, be objective? Well, here's what I think they mean. They mean, Take a breath, step back, and try to see a question with your passions bracketed out. So step back, and whatever your emotional, passionate reaction to something, step back and bracket that out. That's one way we use the term objectivity in everyday conversation. That you want to look at a question is in as rational and logical a fashion as possible, rather than in a purely emotional or passionate fashion. Does that make sense? I think in everyday conversation, being objective also means keeping an open mind. When people say, be objective, they're also saying, you know, don't, don't eliminate certain possibilities just because of your passions and your emotions. So, step back, try to be rational, try and keep an open mind. And often, there is an implicit aspect of the claim that you should be objective, which is, you know, don't make stuff up. When you're objective, you're not just creating a story because you want it to be true. So, I'm going to suggest that in everyday conversation, when people ask you to be objective, what they really mean is, keep your emotional reactions under control, and don't forget to be rational and logical. Keep an open mind so that possibilities that you might not first come to can be part of the mix, and don't make stuff up. Seem, does that seem a reasonable kind of ordinary definition of objectivity? All right, so let's review that kind of objectivity. Don't be ruled only by your passions, Try and be logical and rational. Keep an open mind and don't make stuff up. Is there anybody who wants to argue with those guidelines? Or does anybody want to argue that you should always ignore reason and simply, you know, live from your emotions? That you should always discount other possibilities and that it's okay to make stuff up? Is there any situation in which we would endorse those values? Well, no. So in the everyday sense of the word, when people say be objective, that's a, an ideal of sorts that we would all endorse, yes? And we would endorse it throughout our lives. It's not that a specific type of person should be objective in a specific situation. We should all be objective all the time. If objectivity in everyday language simply means work not simply from your passions, but from logic and evidence as well, Keep an open mind and don't make stuff up. If that's what objectivity means, 
Can you imagine anyone arguing against objectivity? No, I, I can't. We should all strive to be objective all the time. So when we talk about objectivity in the context of journalism, we don't mean that because those are simply, you could call them intellectual virtues that we hope everyone would pursue. So objectivity in the everyday sense of the word is not what we're dealing with when we talk about objectivity in journalism. Let's look at another way we use the term objectivity, which comes out of the scientific laboratory, the scientific method. When scientists talk about being objective, what do they mean? Well, in science, you've all been through science classes, you know there's something called the scientific method. There was the scientific revolution, the enlightenment, you know, you know the history of how science developed. And science is a way of looking at the world, trying to understand the world. It has protocols, it has rules. You know that when you took chemistry in high school, you learned rules about how you do experiments in chemistry, yes? Protocols, ways of doing things. And at the core of this is the notion of an experiment, where you control the conditions and you, in, in terms of chemistry, you might mix some chemicals and see what happens. And the rules are crucial. The experiment only works if you follow the rules. And you can replicate the experiment. Somebody else can come and do the same experiment, follow the same rules, and you can compare results. And from that work, you build scientific knowledge. There are rules in science. And when scientists talk about being objective, what they really mean is following those protocols of the scientific method. Now, science, there's a lot of complex questions to ask about modern science and what it's done, but most of us would, would endorse those rules of science. If you're doing science, you follow the rules and you get results that are trustworthy. You learn things, but you follow the rules. Now, that's another sense in which we use the term objectivity. And most people don't argue with that either. It doesn't mean science can answer all questions, but when science tackles a question it can answer, and you follow those rules, you in, then you follow scientific objectivity in a sense, then you get results you can trust, and we know things. So most people don't challenge that either. The problem is when we talk about journalism, journalism isn't science. Journalism goes out in the real world and observes and reports. Journalism doesn't engage in experiments on human beings. Journalism doesn't have a scientific method because it's not doing science. It's not in the laboratory. It's out in the real world where you don't get to have a control group and an experimental group and you don't get to run the same experiment twice to see if the results replicate. So, just as there's a way we use objectivity in everyday language, and most people would endorse that, there's a way we use objectivity in a scientific sense, and most people would endorse that. But neither of those notions of objectivity, either the common sense notion of objectivity or the rigorously scientific notion of objectivity, really are what are at stake in journalism. Because journalists should be objective in the common sense way we use the term, but then everybody should be objective in that sense. So there's nothing special about journalistic objectivity if it's simply some intellectual virtues we should all be trying to attain. And journalistic objectivity can't be scientific because journalists aren't engaged in a scientific enterprise. So when journalists talk about being objective, we have to understand exactly what they mean about objectivity in a specifically journalistic context. Am I making sense? So if we move into what objectivity means in the newsroom, what we're going to do is look at the practices of journalism, the way journalists do their job, and ask what do they mean when they say they are being objective in those practices. Now some of what they mean by being objective is drawing on that common sense notion. They're saying we want to bracket out to the degree possible our purely emotional and passionate reactions. 
Now, everybody should do that when they're trying to understand the world, but journalists will tell you that they do it with a little extra effort because it is essential to their profession. They will look at evidence and logic, not simply passion and emotion. Journalists will say, we try to keep an open mind. Everybody should try and keep an open mind, but as professionals, we journalists are committed to that with a certain kind of you know, zeal that ordinary people might not have. And the commitment to not make stuff up, journalists will tell you, is central to their professional practices. So in some sense, when journalists say, I'm going to be objective, they're using that common sense use of objectivity, the way we use it in everyday language, and they're just saying, we do it with a little extra effort. That because of our special role, we recognize we have a professional obligation to be objective as much, as often, as completely as we can. But there's another aspect to objectivity that isn't just about trying to be always following good intellectual practices. It's also, I think, the core of objectivity in journalism is a set of practices that determine who is and who is not a reputable source. So when we talk about journalistic objectivity in practice, most of what we're talking about is questions of sourcing. So what do I mean by this? Well, remember that journalists, journalists rely on sources of information. When journalists go out to collect information, to understand the world, to communicate that to the public, some of that is based on direct observation, yes? Journalists go out in the world and they observe things. But a lot of what you read in a newspaper or see on a news broadcast is not based on journalist direct observation. It's based on other people's observations. Journalists are using sources because journalists aren't, ever, aren't able to be everywhere at all times. That includes human sources. Journalists go out and they interview people about what happened and it includes documentary sources, records, where people have in some way recorded things on a piece of paper or some other form. So journalists, while they do base a lot of what they do on observation, even more of it is based on sources, both human sources from face-to-face -face interviews journalists conduct and the documentary record that journalists consult. The, the, the reports and, and the, the studies and the, the actual original documents from a governmental age, all of that is what journalists consult when they're writing their stories, putting together their broadcasts. So sources are crucial in understanding what journalists mean by objectivity. Because if you think about it, there's a lot of potential sources in the world for a journalist, yes? I mean, there's a lot of people in the world, for instance. Do journalists interview everyone in the world who might know something about a story? Well, no, it would be impossible. So journalists are always selecting sources, just as we always select the information we use to understand the world. Journalists are no different. They have to select out of this huge universe of potential sources. Journalists have to select the sources that will be most important in constructing their stories, correct? So far, all I'm saying is really rather self-evident. So the question is, who are those sources? Which sources show up most in the news? Which sources have the most power to define, in fact, what is news? Because sources are important not only in how their voices end up in stories at the end of the process, Sources are also important in deciding and shaping what is news. And you know this because you've read, been reading the Bennett book where he spends a lot of time talking about how these political actors, politicians and the people they employ, spend a lot of time shaping news, correct? 